Thank you very much for invitation and thanks organizers for providing such a beautiful weather here. It's probably the coolest place in Europe right now. Um, and um, yeah, um, I will try to be, I know that you guys want to go to trip, so I will try to uh, kind of to be as fast as possible. And um, this is mostly advertisement for uh, these two guys, uh, two postdocs, uh, one in Yale and another in Montreal, I forgot what exactly. Um, but they are great and uh, yeah. Um, both of them will be looking for a job in a few years. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, this uh, talk is um, related to a uh, talk by Misha Dechman and by Rick Kenyon uh, in terms that it's, uh, it's also related to some, probably it's not so evident, but uh, in um, kind of they both, all, all the talks are based on some kind of cluster structure, which is quite common here. Um, but uh, um, uh, let me start probably with basic construction that I, I, I think almost all of um, you have seen. It's um, uh, Rick Kenyon, oh, sorry, Rick Schwartz in 92 introduced uh, something which he called pentagram map and which is very simple uh, geometric game. So you start with n gone in a, in a plane, and then you consider uh, um, short diagonals, like you skip one point and take neighboring point and connect it by diagonal. And then as you see, uh, this diagonal also cross and inside this big n gone, you will get smaller n gone. And this is your construction. So you you, you consider a map from on the space of n gons, which takes a bigger one into a smaller one. <clears throat> uh, excellent question. Um, well, uh, honestly, I don't remember. You, you um, yeah, there is a rule. Yeah, but you, you can. I, I think this picture kind of has correct enumeration. And for example, one prime is you start from one, connect to three, and then cross it with two, connect with four, and then. Yeah. yeah. But uh, one rule is for sure. Two is go goes after one. Yeah. Um, okay. So um uh one can uh, the, the the question was to study this map and uh before we study this map um do we have a pen? Yeah. um it uh, it's good to kind of not that uh, this map is uh, equivalent with respect to projective transformation so we can define it on the projective classes of n gons and also uh, to make it a little bit, uh, uh, to make our life a little bit easier. So we consider something which we call twisted and gone. So which means that <clears throat> twisted and gone in a plane is collection of infinite collection of points. Uh, with conditions that P I plus N is equal to some element of Möbius group, fixed element of Möbius group applied to PI. And this worked for any I. Hmm? Uh, well, not Möbius, well, PSL2 R. Free. Right. <clears throat> so, this is called the space of twisted and gons. And we fix some n. Uh, yeah, if you consider the closed and gone, then it means that this operator is just, we choose it equal to one, to identity. Um, 
well, so to, uh, we want to study the dynamical property of the map, of this pentagram map. And to do that, uh, we want to introduce some uh, coordinates on this space. And it's better these coordinates to be projectively invariant. So one way to do it is the following. So what happened? Ah. So, well, if, if there are points, we can choose a lift like vectors belonging to the corresponding projective lines. Uh, and uh, in general situation, it's uh, when three points are different, when three consecutive points are different, it's, uh, well, the corresponding vectors form a basis of R3. So it means that next point can be expressed as linear combination of three consecutive points. And pretty simple lemma says that, uh, well, under some conditions that the list can be chosen so that the last uh, coefficient is equal to one, always. So then we can choose as coordinate of this uh, xi and yi, the corresponding pair of coefficients, and they form a projective, projectively invariant system of coordinates. So one can see, for example, that the space Pn of twisted n gons in P2 under projective equivalence uh, is 2n dimensional. It's also easy to understand because in the plane, each point is given by two coordinates, right? And then uh, you have uh, uh, you, you have also one extra element uh, monodromy, which gives you extra eight coordinates. And then you have to subtract this guy again, because you take, you consider the sequence of point up to PSL3 uh, equivalent, equivalent. So the, uh, the total dimension is 2n. And uh, well, these guys form a system of coordinates. So um, by classical result, by uh, Richard Schwartz of Sienk and Tabachnikov, I guess. Ah, right, or it's yeah, Richard, Schwartz. just Schwartz. So you can express this pentagram map in terms of, you, you just get this uh, rational transformation. So the question is, well, you have this rational, rational transformation. Oops. Uh, what are dynamical properties? And it appears that, uh, uh, this map is completely integrable in the following sense. So, um, you will sense, and it's always a question when, uh, when you have discrete system, what does it mean integrability? Here it means that uh, uh, there is a invariant Poisson structure of fixed current, like current two if n is odd and current four is n is even, and there is kind of the right number of integrals in it. In involution, uh, well, which kind of kind of Poisson commute and Poisson bracket looks in this way, and there are two proofs of this theorem: one original proof by Arsian Schwartz and Tabachnikov, and another one, uh, kind of Misha Alec and well Sergey first, and then Misha Alec and me uh, give another proof based on kind of a cluster algebra approach to this problem because uh, I will say in kind of well, there, there is yeah um, almost <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, okay so what I want to say now is some generalization of uh, um, of this problem, namely uh, uh, Gloria Marie Beffe and uh, her student Felipe in 2015 introduced the following generalization of this pentagram map. Instead of a sequence of points in P2, well, what are points in P2? It's just lines in three dimensional space, right? So you can consider K space, well, what I have. Uh, n space in free in free and dimensional n subspace in free and dimensional space. Um, oh. So if you have n subspace, 
well, this K should be capital N, I guess, everywhere. Um, so, well, if you have uh, n-dimensional subspace and n-dimensional subspace, and the line connecting this uh, two n-dimensional subspaces means just the linear span of two subspaces, so it has dimension 2n. And then if you have two lines, each of that dimension, well, two subspaces, each of dimension 2n, then kind of difficult computation shows that the intersection has dimension n. So the intersection point correspond to, again, to element of the same Grassmannian, to n and free n space. So kind of thinking about uh, like starting from points in general position, you can play the same game and everything is well defined. And uh, the question is, um, uh, okay, what can you say about these dynamics? And the uh, theorem by uh, Marie Beth and Philippe says that this Grassmann map is com also completely integrable. But the claim of this theorem was a little bit strange because it was not so clear what uh, what do they mean by saying that it's complete integrable. They found um, some number of um, integrals. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. The, the, well, two things. Are, yeah. Thanks for the question. Small n has nothing to do with capital N. But small k is the same as capital N. Well, for to be safe, I would suggest small n be bigger than uh, capital. And no, um, well. Yeah, you, I, I want kind of some. I want more points than them. <laughs> well, yeah, think about capital big and be small, small and be large. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, well, uh, one of the problems with the original paper was that uh, uh, they found some invariance of uh, dynamics, but uh, they weren't able even formulate what is Poisson and uh, what is Poisson bracket invariant with respect to this section. And this gap was fixed by Anton, right? In, um, and is it proof that it is the same bracket that, well, it's co common belief that in, Anton introduced some bracket, which is, <laughs> uh, well, uh, on you consider a uh, configuration space of n points in Grassmannian, and uh, on the function on this space, you can introduce Poisson bracket, which is invariant with respect to such. Okay, um, so, uh, well, uh, the, the work, uh, what I want to say about is somewhat uh, um, kind of the, the moral of this work that uh, both cases like classical pentagram map, and this is more generalized pentagram map can be treated more or less in the same way. So, and there is no big difference, but uh, the main tool is that you have to replace usual commuting coordinates by something non-commuted in the sense as uh, uh, Rick Kenyon explained just uh, in the previous talk, when, uh, when you take kind of, instead of connection kind of on, um, on, the, on the sides of dimers, you just put like matrices. The same thing happens here. Um, well, let's think what can be thought as coordinates in this Grassmann pentagram map. Um, so if uh, you have vertices uh, like elements of Grassmannian, we can use, we can choose a lift in free and by uh, of 
each element of Grassmannian, and the lift will be just uh, free n by n matrix. And the, if the lift is generic, then uh, like uh, lifts of free consecutive points form a basis in in free n dimensional space. And if it's a basis, then you can write this relation again as in previous case. But now this xi, yi, and zi coefficients of our uh, uh, kind of relation are matrices. And again, small lemma that, uh, well, it's impossible to kill the last coefficient and uh, kind of make this thing periodic, but the, well, you can choose a lift such that uh, coefficients x, i, and y are quasi periodic. Quasi -periodic. So um, if you take, if you denote by z the product of uh, uh, all coefficients uh, with i plus two from i one to n, then uh, kind of after period, the coefficients of x should be changed, should be conjugated like that. So you don't see it for in classical pentagram map because all matrices become one by one and conjugation doesn't do anything. Um, well, then we can introduce the phase space of Grassmann pentagram map, which is twisted and gones, which is very similar to what we have before. So coordinates are given by collection of x i y i and this z and up to common gln conjugation and uh, our pentagram map in in uh, in this uh, kind of coordinates looks like that but now we have to be careful because this capital x are matrices now so you cannot you cannot commute them um Okay, now the question is, uh, if you have um, uh, the, the technique developed by, uh, well, mostly by Misha Gechman and uh, Alec and me as a uh, when uh, if you have like uh, some similar situation, like cluster algebra situation, there is always Poisson break compatible with that. And uh, you want some sort of Poisson bracket, but uh, uh, it should be Poisson bracket with um, values in uh, in the, well in the algebra of coefficients. Since algebra of coefficients is um, n by n matrices, so it's not commutative anymore. So we want to introduce some notion of Poisson bracket, which is uh, well with values in non-commutative algebra. And it is not a simple thing because, uh, for example, if your algebra is free, then there is a theorem that you don't have any non trivial Poisson bracket which satisfy all usual axioms except for commutator. And we are not interested in commutators. So, uh, the way people thought about it, it's uh, well, you kind of uh, you take a quotient of you. Uh, from your associative algebra to uh, well something which is called uh, cyclic space or zero Hochschild homology space you just take a quotient of a by commutator a with a so <clears throat> elements of this space are linear combination of such cyclic words so it's kind of product of elements of a up to cyclic up to cyclic uh, shift Hmm? 80s, I guess. 80s. Yeah, I think 80s or early 90s. Um, well, uh, Crowley Bowie gave uh, the following definition H not Poisson structure on A is a liberated on A sharp. Yeah, so, so yes, yeah, such that each uh, commutator is induced by derivation of A. And uh, well, problem with this approach is the following, that when you consider this quotient space A sharp, you lose the properties of algebra. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, and sharp is what? I. Oh. 
Okay. Well, um, well, say natural. Okay, a natural. Uh, so anyway, as natural as it looks, so it, it doesn't have uh, the properties of uh, algebra. So you cannot multiply elements. In particular, you lose all Leibniz rule. So if you have some properties for generators, you cannot extend it automatically to the whole algebra. And this is a big problem is this thing. So if you want to prove something, like how things work in usual algebra, you prove something for generators. And if you, you know that it goes for relations, well, you, you are done. And here you really have to work to prove something. And it's why people hate it. Um, so, well, the theorem of Crowley Bowie says that H not Poisson structure on A induce a Poisson bracket of like space of homomorphism. Yeah, so, uh, well, cyclic word is some, somewhat remains uh, as the trace, right? If you take trace of product of matrices, it's, uh, it has this property that trace elements are cyclic shift in product. <clears throat> so it's why this element is sort of correspond to trace. And if you have, um, mm, yeah, you, you have a, a Poisson bracket on the space of representation, like which is defined like that, that if you want to take a Poisson bracket of two traces, you just take the corresponding projection, take the, uh, well, this Lie bracket between this A natural and B natural, and then take trace of it. Uh, well, this, uh, Lie bracket is uh, it's from here. So H not Poisson structure is a Lie bracket on A natural. It, it's just definition. If you have Lie bracket, so. <clears throat> what do we mean by non-commutative integrability? Um, by non-commutative non integrable system in A, we mean the map, uh, like dynamic map in A, such that there is infinite family of invariants, but invariants we consider as elements in a natural, like infinite sequence of elements in a natural, such uh, that there is a T invariant H not Poisson structure, such that the correspondent elements uh, Poisson commute with each other. Um, so, well, if you go back to this expression, we can uh, for we can define like a pentagram map for non-commutative variables just by this expression when we think x, x i and y i as um, sort of elements of skew field and. Uh, um, then we can ask a question, uh, kind of, can we, uh, is this thing non-commutatively integrable? And the theorem by uh, Nikovenhaus in 2018 says that Grassmann pentagram map is non-commutative integrable system in the free skew field. <clears throat> well, he proved this theorem uh, Kind of, as I said, it's it's hard to work with uh, um, with H not Poisson structures, and but there are some help tools, which were were introduced by Vanderberg. So it's called the double bracket on a associative algebra is a bilinear map from eight. Well, it should be tensor from eight tensor A to eight tensor A, such that it satisfy. Uh, well, this anti commutativity and some sort of uh, Leibniz identity. So, again, the advantage of this double bracket is that it has Leibniz identity. And if you, if you prove something for generators, you can extend it to the other. Then, a double bracket induces a bilinear skew symmetric operation on A natural given by the following. So, uh, well, if you take um, double bracket of Two elements, in it principle, it's element in uh, tensor square of A. And then you can just take, uh, well, you, you just take the product of these two elements. 
and uh, well, it induces you well this operation, and this operation is not necessarily liberated, but when it is, it gives H not positive. If you can check, uh, well, the axioms for given double bracket, uh, we are okay. Now, for the case of pentagram map, we can consider uh, the following. Uh, let the does it work? Can you well end? Hello. And uh, uh, sources on one boundary com uh, component, and uh, on the other, there are only things. And all internal vertices are free valent. This is so, uh, of our um, quiver inside the cylinder have two uh, well may have two different out of two different either one incoming cage and two outgoing or two incoming and one outgoing the first one are called white the second one are called black and uh, this uh, sort of is compatible with what rick drawn uh, drawn and his or its opposite to um <clears throat> well then we consider such a graph in the cylinder drawn in the cylinder and equip the arcs with some non commutative weights. <laughs> so, so consider the free algebra generated by arrows of Q and FB is the skew field of fractions. And we define the double bracket by the following rule that in this situation, the uh, double bracket of Y and Z is Y tensor Z. And in this situation, double bracket of B and C is. Uh, opposite C tensor B, and the remaining uh, double brackets are zero. Then this, it is a statement. It's computational statement, which is not very complicated. That induced bracket on F natural is a Lie bracket. So it induces H not Poisson structure. Um, okay, uh, yeah, is there something about um, so mm. no, oh, well, sorry, let, let me say the following thing. So if you have such a picture, uh, uh, there is also gauge group action on on such graphs so for this each vertex if we assign some element h to the vertex then we can multiply um, all incoming carols with h on the right and all outgoing carols with h inverse on the left and if now we define the weight of any path as a product of weights along the arrows in the path then we see that such thing doesn't change under gauge action. <clears throat> so in particular, if you, uh, if you draw such a graph, a very particular graph on the cylinder, and we assign, uh, well, x, xi to this vertical arrows in the squares, and yi to this, to this bottom horizontal arrows on the squares, and all remaining will be ones, uh, then we can see that, uh, well, this X i's and Y i's correspond to two particular closed loops in this cylinder. So like X i, it's given by this blue loop and Y i is given by this red loop. Uh, then we can well we can discuss the following elementary uh, local transformation of a quiver which weights of any closed path or any path which goes from from the source to C. Uh, well it's this is commutativity laws well 
you can swap like in this situation you can swap to arrows and change the weights in very predictable way and the only non-trivial move is that so it's called square move and you um, take this thing and replace weights like uh, prescribed here and it's correspond to this some uh, known transformation in dimer model this so-called urban renewal move um, yeah so this thing can be extended to uh, to this theory of dimers in this non-commutative weights. Okay, then uh, the pentagram map can be obtained by the sequence. Of, well, so what do we have? Any any element of uh, uh, kind of any object in our phase space of pentagram map, the coordinates x i and y i. So what we do, we, we, we draw a graph like that in the cylinder and we assign X, I and Y, I to some particular edges of uh, this, um, of this graph. And then we will do transformations, what we have before, what we discussed before, and, uh, and then apply gauge equivalence. So it's very particular way, set of transformations, which I don't want to explain. So, and then we apply gauge equivalence, but the point is that uh, after we do these transformations, we will obtain the uh, kind of the change is, well, correspond exactly to the, uh, to the pentagram rule for the non-commutative non pentagram rule. Well, one one comment is the following that uh, note that uh, if you take uh, the transformation that we use don't change uh, the weight of the path which goes like from one vertex to uh, from the source to sink so all these weights uh, well if you take uh, say uh, if you if you take one source one sink and consider all paths going from source to sink and then take the sum over all the weights of this path this remains invariant under the transformations except that uh, among our transformations we sometimes we take uh, <clears throat> we take one arrow and remove it from the left and, atta and attach it from the right and this results in conjugation of uh, well all all these uh, uh, elements uh, which correspond to sources can be formed into matrix. Uh, this operation results in uh, conjugation the matrix by something. So if you take any any quantity which is invariant under conjugation, it remains invariant under this transformation. And this is a uh, the integrals of of uh, pentagram map. So for example, if you um, if you take something which is called boundary measurement, so BIJ is exactly what I said. If you, I, I is a source, G is a sink. You take all sum over all paths connecting I to J of product of weights of all edges along this path. Then the, these things form matrix and uh, uh, this matrix change on the under conjugation and if you take traces of powers of this matrix it remains invariant <clears throat> now nick of house in his thesis proves the theorem that uh, well this if you take uh, this invariance well kind of projection of uh, of the of traces of powers of this boundary measurement matrix to the corresponding quotient space that they uh, they in involution with each other with respect to our induced bracket <clears throat> and it was easy to also to compute that it he compared with the invariance obtained by Marie Beth and Philippe and uh, that's equivalent up to some elementary transformation uh, well 
the original proof by Nick that this guy sign evolution is combinatorial and he he must compute some kind of intersection of paths and these graphs which uh, it's hard work but uh, we can notice that in commutative work uh, there exists like very conceptual proof that traces of powers of, uh, of this lux matrix are in involution because the corresponding Poisson bracket is a uh, matrix bracket and it is known that if you have um, kind of two add invariant function uh, they commute with, with respect to our matrix bracket so, <clears throat> well it is uh, kind of at least it is written. I don't know whose result it is, but it's written in Encyclopedia of Mathematics. Um, well, and the point is that what we can then try to introduce a notion of R matrix also in these non commutative settings, and it, it works. <clears throat> so, um, how much time do I have? Oh. Uh, so, let's denote this tensor product by this square tensor tensor product just to be different from well this x and y are matrices now so and then we can introduce if given a matrix uh, with uh, entries in the non um, non commutative field we uh, kind of introduce two more matrices x left and x right as matrices with coefficients in uh, with, with entries in tensor product a, a tensor a uh, where x left is just x i j, x left i j is x i j tensor one, and x right i j is one tensor x i j. <coughs> and <coughs> we can introduce this matrix double bracket operation, so uh, which takes a tensor product of two matrices with entries in A and uh, form into uh tensor product of matrices space of matrices with uh, elements in a tensor a such that well the double bracket is written as tensor well as this tensor product it's kind of um, generalization of standard not uh, standard tensor notation for Poisson bracket <clears throat> Again, uh, pretty simple uh, lemma says that, uh, well, this double bracket operation on matrices satisfies some sort of Leibniz identity. <clears throat> and uh, as I said, so in commutative case, the Poisson bracket is our matrix bracket where our matrix is, is kind of standard R matrix. So, as a tier, well, in our next paper with Simeon and Nick, so we uh, we kind of found some form for our matrix um, for this non in non commutative case, and it's almost the same as for commutative, except that uh, well, it looks like almost like com commutator with some R matrix, except that the second term you have to apply this uh, twist operation so twist operation which uh, <clears throat> uh, changes well a tensor b maps to b tensor a so it's changed the order of uh, factors in tensor product um, in particular if uh, if our matrix is square then this double bracket it just becomes a commutator of uh, uh, some are matrix with a tensor product of B left and B right. <laughs> and uh, here R is coincide with the same uh, classical R matrix. Well, as it, this is an example of, uh, well, as Maxim Kazarian said that, well, this example showing that this theorem not only proof but it also also true um, some very small computation for matrices of size one by two um, well 
anyway, it's probably not so interesting. And uh, uh, for the case of cylinder, uh, there is classical trigonometric R matrix. And uh, we also proved that it, uh, the same classical trigonometric R matrix works only for, for non commutative variables with this extra twist operation. <clears throat> and finally, uh, the introduction of this R matrix allow us to prove that the corresponding traces of powers of uh, a lux operator of lux matrix acted by the network with non commutative weights uh, are also commute with, uh, with respect to this um, um, H not Poisson bracket. Well, and this is end of the story. Thank you. So. Okay, just, uh, so you explain how to non commutatively define and integrate pentagram. Are there other examples? Uh, working on it. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. It's question to you, your old paper, right? <laughs> right. No, I think it's it's equivalent, but I, well, your contribution is missing here. So you, you again have to prove, you prove this in commutative case, right? We also have flat connection probably on different surfaces. It's graph connection, so it's sort of flat connection. Yes. <laughs> Integrable system. Oh, uh, you mean for Grassman? Uh, yeah, like I you like business. I don't know. No, it's oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so it's a good question. So in a, in classical case, uh, kind of we can embed uh, our discrete system into continuous flow. Um, yeah. So yeah, we pro we also proved it. There is yeah. You, you can also do it here. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, well, there is continuous flow, and it's sort of refactorization flow, like in in uh, commutative case. But uh, I, I I sort of don't understand the question about continuous symmetries. Ah, okay. Then, then yes. <laughs>